Hi, you've clicked onto today's tropical tidbit from Wednesday. The Atlantic doesn't look too awfully active yet, but there are a couple of things to watch for before July is out. This is Invest 97L over here north of Hispaniola, and I'll, I'll get to that in a second. There are a couple of, of other things to notice. There's a nice area of disturbed weather over here as a couple of tropical waves are propagating west-northwestern to the Bay of Campeche. There's a nice little surface spin developing here west of the Yucatan, and this is coming west-northwest into northern Mexico in about 48 hours and really shouldn't have time to do much. An interesting thing to watch, but the main problem with this will be heavy rains moving into Texas and northern Mexico, and some areas will probably get several inches of rain out of this as this comes ashore over the next two to three days. So just a lot of wet tropical weather for them. Also, there's another, th there's 97L over here, but there's kind of a second trough behind it. You can see this isolated area of thunderstorms behind this. And as this comes, comes over here, It'll be interesting to see whether this comes across the islands and tries to spin something up as it gets into here um, in four, five, six days. We'll have to keep an eye on it, but this has been sort of two systems for a while now. It's not all one big thing. It's more like 97L and then something else over here that doesn't have much spin with it because the surface winds are all out of this direction, but there is a slight disturbance in here that should be watched as it comes this way over the next several days. Um, but first of all, we're focusing on 97L, which is our most imminent threat. You can see what has gone on since last night. A lot of the thunderstorm activity has died down in this area. We've got um, most of it congregating in here right now. You can see a nice little spin developing here along a very well inverted, inverted V trough over here. Um, the problem with this right now is that it's so close to northern Hispaniola that all the inflow coming into the system is coming out of the south and it's coming right off the island which means that the air is coming over these big mountains coming down off the mountains down sloping down their northern slopes and drying as it sinks coming into the system so it's drying air getting pulled into the system from its main inflow channel in here and this is going to be a limiting factor as it comes west it may have more of a chance if it gets up into this area. Still may have to deal with Cuba depending on exactly how far south towards the coast it tracks, but this is going to limit its activity right now. This area of thunderstorms really isn't all that impressive, but you can see that the wind flow is becoming very well defined in here. Nice inverted trough. We're close to seeing a surface flow developing. Another inhibiting factor for development here, if we look at the water vapor, is this big upper low. 97L is right in here this big upper low is coming westward and 97L is coming westward right along with it. You can see that there's a there's a deep layer ridge over to the southern United States and out over the southwest Atlantic and deep layered means that the steering currents at both the surface, there's a ridge here at the surface layer, there's a ridge here in the middle layers and there's a ridge also in the deep layers and as this trough lifts out this will be building in into more of a large high over here and this is directing here's the upper low you can kind of see it here this big high is directing everything westward around it so that means that this upper low is moving in the same direction as 97L and they're just moving in tandem and this is a problem because 97L can't seem to get enough room to warm the atmosphere and get upper ridging over it and that upper anticyclone which is favorable for development instead it's getting drier punched into it from the northwest and shear um, on the east side of the upper low and all this other stuff that isn't really allowing it to go off and the models are seeing this by not developing it very much the problem is illustrated quite well on the European. I don't know how well you guys can see this. The black contour lines here, the black solid lines are surface isobars, and the colored wind barbs are upper winds at the 200 millibar level. This is the 0Z zero zero run from last night, 48 hours out. 97L is right in here. You can see one tiny closed isobar and a nice inverted trough coming up the north coast of Cuba. This is the upper low. Right in here you can see the wind barb circulating in a counterclockwise direction. This is the upper low. This is 97L. You can see it's still stuck on the eastern side. We go out to 72 hours. Here's 97L came through the Straits of Florida. Here's the upper low. Still big strong southerly southeasterly flow aloft over it. Not much ridging to work with over here. We go to 96 hours. Here's 96L. 
here's the upper low, you can see they never really get separated, they never get a chance. If 97L was found farther east, it might have more of a chance but it's moving right in tandem with the upper low and this shouldn't allow it to do too much. You can see that the European, especially in here, kind of you know deepens it fairly nicely. I mean, it's a nice little trough. It, it may, may try to have a nice look to it, but it may not be able to do much. This may try to pull away a little bit more than the European is showing right at the end, and if it comes all the way across the gulf, you may see it try to wind up by the end, but I... I'm not really seeing where this is a major, major development threat. The NHC was giving it 70% yesterday, and I disagreed with that. I don't think this has as much of a shot as they're giving it right now. I could see it developing into a tropical depression, weak tropical storm, but I don't see it being significant, and it, it's very possible that this will not develop at all. Here are the current model tracks as of 12Z, taking it off this way over southern Florida and taking it somewhere towards the eastern Gulf Coast. Um, US models, big forward bias, this is ridiculous, this is not going to happen. The ridge is building really strong over the southeast right now and this should direct, well it's going to be more like this, it should direct this more more west and southward. I think this may actually go through the straits, may not even hit Florida, I'll have to see how it goes over here, but this may be I think the BAM, the BAM suite track or southward, this may even make it to Texas like the European was showing. The Canadian also shows this coming all the way across into Texas over here. And I think I think this is a good idea. The ridge, the mid-level ridge and the surface ridge are all going to be strong through here. I don't see this curving up and I mean it's climatology so these models they want to take it north um, because that's where climatology favors. You can see the climatology model wants to take it up the east coast of Florida because that's where these systems like to go. But this is a big, big developing La Nina year where you have lots and lots of ridging over the southeast and um, things are going to continue to be directed westward. So I wouldn't be surprised if this makes it all the way across the Gulf and takes an entire journey right through the Straits and right into the Gulf. Um, so we'll see how that goes. There's really nothing else to be that concerned about except for this other wave behind it in a few days. Um, there are some strong waves coming off Africa but they keep hitting, running into dry air. This is a big old amplified thing that stretched out into a mid-latitude trough on its northern portion sort of and the main tropical wave is all south of 20 north over here but it's all dried out. You, you remember though that 97L was a big naked swirl out here, big naked swirl, monstrous thing with absolutely no convection. This came across into the tut, got ventilated, and look what we've got. We've got a threat for tropical development. See now these things have to be watched even when they come off to the north over cold, SS, uh, cold um, sea surface temperatures and dry air. They still have to be watched when they come west. Um, <clears throat> not sure if we're going to get that named storm that I thought was going to happen before the end of the month, but we'll keep watching for it. There are, there are opportunities. The MJO is still in a favorable position, so we'll have to keep watching and keeping our eyes peeled. Um, when this season gets going, it's really going to get going. It keeps trying to boil over, and it hasn't quite done it yet, but once it does, we're going to get a big burst of storms, and we will have no break for a while. So it's good to have the rest while we have it. We'll keep watching. That's it for today. Thanks for watching.